The Supreme Court rules all. Senate Republicans introduce police reform legislation and George Washington goes down in Portland. It's time to get informed, America. You're listening to Get Informed, America, the only true unfiltered show that's fighting fake news and finding common ground. Now, here's your hosts, Dave Oakenquist and Rodney Johnson. Hello and welcome to Get Informed America, the show that breaks through the mainstream media box to bring you real smart news. Hi, I'm Dave Oakenquist, and joining me, the Sultan of Sanity, the Wizard of Wit, and of course, the smartest man I know, the editor of InformedAmerican.com, Mr. Rodney Johnson. Rodney, good morning. How are you? I'm good, Dave. With an intro like that, I'm awesome. You certainly are. And I do want to apologize at the top here for all of you watching. We might, we're having a little bit of a connection issue. Um, I did reset my internet. But, you know, Rodney, before we get started, I just want to mention, you know, internet service providers, they don't seem to be keeping up with the, the demands of the customers, particularly those who, who need uh, good connections to do video chats. What do, you, what do you make of that? I mean, a lot of this went worked at home. And so we kind of overwhelmed the system. And we're finding out that... Uh, you know, buying a hundred gig service doesn't mean that you get a hundred gig service. <laughs> it doesn't mean, but you know what's funny though? As bad as the internet is, Netflix always seems to work. They've got, I don't know how they've, they've got that figured out. Um, it, it never stutters for me ever. And even when my connection is crappy, but yeah, I know the advertised speed versus real world stuff. Uh, I'm not very happy. Uh, I'm going to call bull crap on that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, with all of that, Rodney, let's get into this. It was actually a pretty busy week. Yeah. News wise, it felt like last week. Uh, it felt like it was just kind of more of the same. Uh, but but this week we got we got some stuff. Particularly the big thing, um, well, two big things. One of them was the Supreme Court decisions, Rodney. Uh, I'll start with DACA. The the court rejected the administration's attempt to end the program. Uh, Chief Justice, and, and essentially, there's a lot of criticism here. I'm very critical of this decision, Rodney, because I assume this was going to be an open and shut case. Uh, but Chief Justice Roberts didn't see it that way and agreed with the liberal wing of the court saying, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm going to distill this. I'm going to hand this to you in a second saying, yeah, you know, uh, the, 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 the one when Obama did DACA wasn't really legal, but uh, we didn't really like the way you ended that program. So now you got to come back and try again. And of course, all this time waiting through this uh, in the system uh, and as, you know, hoping for a fix for Congress, that never came. And here we are back to the drawing board, Rodney. What'd you make of this decision? You know, I was kind of on the same page. And, and, you know, it doesn't matter what you think of DACA. That really wasn't the point of the Dreamers Act. It's about uh, the original program didn't fit with how it was supposed to be put into place. And so, you know, you can call it illegal, unlawful, you know, what, whatever you want to say. It wasn't put into place correctly. Yeah. And so, you know, when the Trump administration said, hey, you know, we're, we're unwinding this, it seemed pretty straightforward on that basis. And so when the Supreme Court found that they didn't follow the Procedures Act, which requires them to provide a reasonable basis for a change in procedure, it's like, well, wait a second. You can't say that it's not reasonable just to unwind something that wasn't lawful in the first place. It really, it was a stretch. Um, I was surprised uh, that it came out. I think a lot of people were. Um, And I I wanted it to be declared unlawful, not because I, I don't like the Dreamer Act. I mean, I'm I guess I'm one of many people who thinks, look, you're right here as a kid. Wasn't your fault. You're three, four, five years old. That's all you've known. Yeah. I want to see Congress do their job and actually legislate and come up with something that is a compromise that the American public would agree to instead of seeing this get batted around the courts and just kind of stick around for a decade, which is like you said, what's going to happen. And so once again, it's Congress not doing their job. And this takes all pressure off of them to actually come up with some sort of uh, reasonable immigration policy concerning people who are brought here as children. This has become a pattern, hasn't it? Well, we'll just punt it to the court and we'll let nine people decide for the rest of the country, uh, not, not our elected representatives who we put in place to do these things. No, we'll just leave it up to the circumstances of a particular case and how a particular set of nine people decide something in, you know, forever kind of a thing. And well, this one, they claim it's narrow. Uh, but uh, that does bother me a lot, Rodney, and it should go through the legislature and not leave it up to the court to make law. Well, I agree, uh, because it's a game of brinkmanship. You keep letting it go further and further up the courts without Congress doing something, and you're going to come away with some group very unhappy with what is now a precedent for the law of the land, uh, and then gets, of course, used in other cases. That's the big problem here, 
is now this sets a precedent for every time that somebody in the Oval Office, whoever that is, wants to unwind something from a previous administration that's not a law. I mean, let's, let's back up. These aren't laws. These are rules uh, that you see that are put in place procedurally because they can't get a law passed. And then they say, oh, you can't unwind that rule unless you adhere to these certain things over here. And so it, it sets up a pretty bad precedent. Uh, yeah, Rodney. And, and by the way, <laughs> another technical difficulty. We realized we weren't getting the right microphone going. So I really appreciate everybody bearing with one us. One of those here. days. One of those days. <laughs> Get our crap together here, Rodney. Uh, yeah, there's a. By the way, uh, Ted Cruz gave an impassioned speech on the Senate floor. I don't know if you caught it. He basically he says, uh, Chief Justice Roberts has been playing games with the court to achieve the policy outcomes he desires. And then he went, he went to Obamacare. He went there on Chief Justice Roberts. So not happy about that. Um, and to your point, Rodney, about sort of this procedural thing, I want to quickly read Justice Thomas. Uh, his, in his dissent, he says, the majority does not even attempt to explain why a court has the authority to scrutinize an agency's policy reasons, reasons for rescinding an unlawful program under the arbitrary and capricious microscope. Thomas said, the decision to countermand an unlawful agency action is clearly reasonable. So long as the agency's determination of illegality is sound, our review should be at an end. In other words... This is none of our business. <laughs> they got said, we're not disputing the illegality. They got rid of it. That's enough. We, we, we have no place here is what he's saying. Right. Uh, and, I, and I happen to agree with, with Thomas. Um, so I don't know. I guess we'll just go back. They'll try to do something with DACA or maybe, uh, maybe they'll, get the, they'll cross the right T's and dot the right I's to, in order to remove something, uh, an order from a previous administration. Strange. And, and what I see is this is – the system here's this is my opinion here uh justice roberts is an, is an, is an establishment guy um mass immigration is the desire of the establishment and when it's up to a court they will find a way to keep it going in perpetuity that's my opinion <laughs> well there you go <laughs> uh the other round the other uh, big the big supreme court rule yeah we'll just we'll just forget what i said there the supreme court ruled in a 6-3 decision on uh, june 15th that title 7 of the 1963 civil rights act applies to lgbtq individuals uh this comes from uh in neil gorsuch writing the majority opinion uh this comes a uh, quote from deseret news an employer who fi- just so everyone's clear an employer who fires an individual for being homosexual or trans Transgender fires that person uh, for traits or actions it would not have questioned in members of a different sex. Sex plays a necessary and in, 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 in indisguisable role. Sorry, in the in the decision, exactly what civil rights law forbids. So, uh, came from a case where I believe it was a. a I don't want to. I don't want to get things wrong, but someone had transitioned to a trans person. They worked at a funeral home. They notified their employer. Uh, and said, "When you, I'm taking a leave. When I come back, I'm going to identify as a as a different uh, sex." And the employer said, "I, I think the quote, the exact quote was, this isn't going to work for us," uh, and fired that person. And then that's uh, this suit made its way all the way up to the Supreme Court uh, for employer protections uh, or employee protections, rather, as it regards to the Civil Rights Act. Uh, what, what did you make of this decision, Rodney? Actually, that was one of three plaintiffs in the case. There was another gentleman who was fired from an administrative job uh, in Georgia. Um, But I was surprised, of course, by the ruling, particularly with Neil Gorsuch in the majority and writing the opinion, because he's considered a contextualist and a textualist where he is looking at the Constitution and the amendments um, as plainly written at the time they were written. Mm -hmm. And the idea is you hearken back to what they meant, being they, the legislature, the people who approved it at the time. And if you want to change it, that's great. There's a process. It's called legislation. Let Congress do it over again or, you know, make it better, whatever. And so uh, I am one of those who looks at it and said, man, it's really hard to believe in the early 60s people were looking at sexual orientation as what they meant with civil rights when they were talking about Title VII. And, and talking about sex. I mean, clearly they meant man, woman, particularly women not being allowed to be, you know, um, discriminated against. And so it, I was really surprised. This is a very, very open reading of that rule or law, rather, that act. And what it allows for is courts to, again, find new um, 
rights, new freedoms, new whatever in laws without them making their way through the legislative process, which means the courts are making the law. And that's not what we're supposed to have. It's what we talked about a minute ago with the DACA ruling. The courts aren't supposed to make law. They're supposed to rule on the law, uh, but not create new. And so it's, but it's where we are, right? And so, uh, you know, a lot of the nation, um, I guess, agrees with it. I don't know. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes forward with Gorsuch. The one person who's got to be pretty upset about this is Donald Trump because he appointed a couple of conservatives and it really isn't working out that way. Uh, yeah, I mean, on that, he's, he can't, his response was, uh, well, he said some angry, angry words on Twitter, but one of his other responses was, I'm going to come up with another list uh, of justices by September. So, you know, what, what kind of a majority do you, do you need? Um, it, well, we, we were told that during the uh, confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh that we would be soon living under, uh, under a, a handmaid's tale type of dystopian regime under the, this, the Supreme Court, the, under the makeup of the current Supreme Court. But it's not quite working out that way. <laughs> no. And, and then we're still people. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. The darndest things. And so when you appoint somebody to be a, a Supreme Court justice, they're going to do things the way they see fit. And yeah. it just proves to your point that history is not always a great guide as to what's going to happen there. And it, it is interesting, uh, as you mentioned uh, earlier about, uh, well, because I'll, I'll briefly give my opinion. I'm a little torn on it because I don't see this in the law. Um, I don't, that doesn't, and I guess what you were saying about, you know, being, uh, um, you know, reading it or, or judging it as the law is written, it doesn't read that way to me. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't want to see anybody just get fired simply for who they are. So I think absolutely that, I think, not, but that's yeah. what you want. You want Congress to pass a law that says, Hey, we're including these rights for these groups as well, yeah. because they should be protected too. And, and that's what you want. You want to affirmatively say through Congress, wait a second, we as a nation think this is the thing instead of having a court say, oh, we found a way we can tuck it over here. So. Yeah, no, I agree 100 percent. And actually on that topic, there, there, there is, in fact, some legislation uh, that, that is slowly making its way uh, exactly on the exact same things that, uh, that the Supreme Court ruled on. There's also another one, Rodney. Uh, before we switch off uh, from this topic, I'd like to get quickly. There's one of them that they're, they're trying to also carve out uh, a religious protection. In other words, getting fired for your religious beliefs uh, to connect sort of the First Amendment to civil rights. And I even wonder if that would extend to political beliefs. Uh, what, what do you think of uh, in, including those kinds of things uh, to these kinds of protections beyond just, uh, you know, race, uh, sex, uh, stuff like that? I don't know. It gets it, it's going to get weird, right? Um, because. You're going to end up in the situation, and religion's the easy one to talk about, mm -hmm. where you are an organization that does something, right? Um, and somebody has a religious belief that doesn't allow them to fully participate in what your organization does. And so they say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm X, doesn't matter what it is. And they say, oh, well, you have, to, you have to work with the organization here doing all these things we do. And you're saying, well, I can't because my religion doesn't allow me. They're like, well, we're going to fire you. Oh, you can't because now you're firing me for religious reasons. Mm -hmm. Man, it gets all the way back to why don't we just do our job and leave all of this at the door? <laughs> and if you yeah. want to come work here knowing what we do, great. If you don't want to work here, don't work here. That's great, too. But on the flip side, to your point, don't check me just because I'm you know, something that you don't care for that if I'm doing my job, right, then I should be golden. If I'm not doing my job, right, kick me to the curb. So that's kind of where I am. I, I go back to my libertarian roots, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I tend to side uh, that way too. When, cause when things just get, you know, this thorny, you just, maybe we need to pull back a little bit and let's just try to be mature adults kind of a thing. All right, Ronnie, the other topic I want to talk about, the big thing going on, is police reform. Of course, we know about all the, the mass protests going on, and now it becomes a time for action, and that's when uh, the government springs, <laughs> springs into action. Yeah. Uh, one of the first things was the Trump executive order, um, which is you know, symbolic, but at least uh, showing his support for, uh, for legislation. Uh, just to quickly, some of the highlights here is about credentialing and certifying police departments, uh, boost information sharing to better track uh, officers with excessive force force complaints like Derek Chauvin he had about a dozen uh, and creating uh, services for addressing mental health 
uh, addiction and homelessness, which I presume to mean uh, instead of just, you know, rounding pe- homeless people off the streets and throwing them in jail, uh, maybe creating some other kind of a, a system for those people. And then Rodney, uh, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, uh, Republican, he introduced legislation uh, in, in the Senate. Uh, and a couple of the highlights of that is uh, to increase department transparency, incentivize body cameras, discourage chokeholds uh, by, uh, by not banning them, but by withholding federal grant money. Uh, there's, a, there's a bipartisan move here to make lynch a federal crime. And uh, one of the things you talked about um, that, you, that you were pushing for uh, is qualified immunity, but uh, Republicans apparently oppose it, calling it a poison pill. Um, but of course, all this is going to be negotiated between the House and the Senate at some point. Um, so wh- wh- where do you see this going forward? Well, I, I, I think that we're talking about it, and that's a good thing, right? I mean, we, we've seen videos, and I, the videos are of a small number of police officers by definition, right? I want to say there's like 800,000 police officers in the United States. And so um, you're, you're not seeing a big instance of these things, but you're seeing instances of this, which is, right. of course, horrible. And so if, if you can look Absolutely. and say there's some commonality here in that police officers who tend to be involved tend to have a number of complaints against them. That seems like a red flag that we should be looking at the complaints and taking action on these things. It's pretty obvious. That's been my thing for a while is I, they hide behind, you know, some arbitration and some other things that are union driven. I get protecting your force and protecting each other, but you shouldn't be protecting bad actors. I would start there. Uh, The chokehold ban, it's already, you know, you're just south of Houston, it's banned. They don't use that sort of thing. And so a lot of police departments have already gone that route. And if there are other ways to um, do your job without that, that seems like a good idea. Uh, but it's, it's going to come down to, I think, people um, starting to look at the very um, gritty nature of what the police do day to day in these instances where it's, it's fast, um, it's brutal, and you have to make a decision on something and you don't know all the pieces and because right. you can't. Right. And so I don't it, I'm not saying that, you know, people shouldn't be held accountable. They certainly should. But we're going to start asking ourselves, well, is this what we want the police to do? And I am one that says, yeah, there are instances where I need those police to have that use of force available to them. Right. I certainly don't want to use it all the time. That's crazy. Um, but we've got to come up with a better way of training of what's going to happen in those instances and recognizing people who are likely to use that in a poor way or illegally and get them off the streets before we ever get to that point. Yeah, I agree 100%. Try to weed out the bad actors as you can. Long Um, before it gets to this. Yeah, certainly. Um, But as you, as you do mention, you know, I don't envy their job. It's a tough, tough Mm -hmm. job. And, and I think, you know, I would, I would assume most, most right thinking cops are, uh, they, they feel like they maybe they're putting in a maybe being put into a bad position, which is, you know, what do I, I and mean, how do I do my job without, um, you know, hurting someone else by enforcing the law and then, you know, maybe not, ex- and, 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 you know, myself doing something wrong, um, you know, to come down, losing my job, that kind of a thing where I where So it, it is difficult and uh, it does need to be sorted out by, uh, well, I don't, I don't know if I'd call them better men than us, but because they don't seem to really have their crap together either, or, or, or uh, you know, Congress and, and all that. Well, smart. You know, the police, they use overwhelming force so they can stop something from getting out of hand. Right. That's, that's kind of the job, right? That's why you have several police officers when you have one instance going on is so it doesn't grow out of control. And so when it starts to spin and, and you know, I, I hear and read, well, you know, they used excessive force. It's like, that's kind of how the job goes because you're trying to clamp down on it before it gets out of hand. And so it's, um, I, I don't know the answer. I wish I did. Right. A- everybody says training. It seems like a trope. Um, clearly we should be looking around for best practices of people who have addressed this. I think the group up in Oregon with cahoots program, uh, where they're separating the social calls from, you know, the police calls, they're separating the, Hey, there's a guy acting kind of crazy, you know, without his shirt in the middle of an intersection, which sounds like mental health. He's not armed. He's not dangerous. Just acting weird from somebody's breaking into the business next door. And so when you're trying to get more money and people focused on the social side, I think that has some value, but that's not defunding. That's actually adding funding. That's a, that's a very different thing. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, Rodney, on this uh, legislation by Tim Scott, which I want to highlight quickly, two, two Democrat senators who stuck their feet in their mouth this week. Uh, Senator Dick Durbin called the Tim Scott's legislation token legislation, uh, but he since apologized for that. That was, that was a, hell of a, thing, a hell of a thing to say. <laughs> and I mentioned that Tim Scott is the one black senator. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. right. So there's yeah. clearly, it wasn't, yeah, that just was at calling Tim Scott the token. Exactly. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, just unbelievable. Um, unconscionable, yeah. really. And then we got Tim Kaine uh, comments that you, you, you reported on informedamerican.com, Senator Tim Kaine from Virginia, uh, saying that the United States invented slavery. Um, is this, does this speak to the, to the level, uh, the poor education system in the United States? Or <laughs> I, I don't know. I wondered about it. That's why I put it on Informed American. Tim Kaine's a smart guy, right? Former uh, vice presidential candidate. And um, he didn't just say it in passing. That's what made it so odd. It is part of a several minute speech that he gave on the floor. Um, and so to have him talking about it and say, you know, we, we didn't inherit it from anyone. We invented it here through the Virginia Commonwealth and the other legislatures in the colonies that, you know, went after fugitive slaves. It's like, wait a second. That's a that's a really poor reading of how history went is, you yeah. know, the Egyptians had slaves. The Romans had slaves. Pretty much every recorded civilization we know of had slavery in some form or fashion, indentured servant, you know, forced labor, that sort of thing. And then he said, we didn't inherit it. And it's like, well, clearly the colonies existed long before the United States did. And as we know, 1619, you know, the first slaves land in Virginia. Right. And so the United States as a country had to have specifically inherited it from the colonies that existed before. And so <laughs> I, I just, I found what it even? disingenuous. I don't, I don't take issue with this broader point I think he was trying to make, which is clearly it is woven into the beginnings of the United States in our history. Mm -hmm. But to say that we invented it, sure, you know, tries to erase a whole bunch of stuff that happened for literally thousands of years before the United States existed. Uh, yeah, well, it is this, uh, I, I, I'm basically speechless, but it does follow the line that America was, it was uniquely evil uh, in the world. It's that, it's that uh, way of thinking. Um, two things, Rodney, before we get out of here, two, two kind of BS items I want to hit on. Uh, one, uh, in the University of Florida has now banned the, the gator bait chant where they do the closed mouth thing. The chomp, the right. So now that's, that's off uh, because of some racist origins. You reported on that in informedamerica.com. And then overnight, Rodney, George Washington, the, fa the father of our country, a statue of George Washington st and in Portland was pulled down. Uh, so what's next? Mount Rushmore? <laughs> well, you know, and, and so as I've said often, you know, 335 million people in the United States, 240 million adults, I bet I can find 500 people to agree with just about anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and this reportedly was 30 or 40 people in Portland that uh, pulled down the George Washington statue after defacing it, by the way. Yeah, no police nearby. Yeah. yeah. And so I, what was their point? And, and, and even bigger, who cares? I don't care what your point is. You're defacing and, you know, destroying public property and that is a crime and it should be prosecuted. Um, and so to, to make it of somebody that, you know, the nation reveres is kind of helping form this nation and get it to where it is, is really unfortunate. So I don't know. I don't know where you go with that other than that was pretty, uh, that was not correct. And I wish that we would have <laughs> captured those people and yeah. given them whatever citation penalty we could. It just feels like there's, there's nobody home. There's no one. <laughs> well, right. Well. Right. And, and, and so that's what it is. And so to your point, um, you know, you're going to, I presume we're going to see more of this happen as people look for the next bad guy and, and you can find them. If you're looking for bad guys, you're going to find them. Yeah. Uh, and I, because Abraham I, Lincoln is now in the crosshairs. I assume you've seen that as well. Well, as I said last week, Rodney, everybody, anybody that's not at, at on June 19th morality is, is suspect. I mean, you know, every, every, everything you everything you ever said. There is no history today. It's it's only what we think today. Um, that's you have to be current. Uh, otherwise, you are uh, you need to be canceled and destroyed. Um, so I can't. I it's something something. It needs to come. It's going to come to a head at some point. And I don't know what, what that's going to look like. Uh, and you, I've seen um, uh, some polling indicating inc increasing fears of uh, some kind of a civil war. Um, 
I, I don't know. It, it feels like these, I mean, if we can't agree on George Washington, then I think at some point um, you're calling these maybe 500 people or, or something, but I think it's much bigger than that. And there are some intractable problems uh, right now in our country. And I don't, I don't see a path to solving them. And I, I know you, you are the optimist. I am. And my path is always the same education. I, I always say that, you know, sunlight's the best disinfectant. I did not make that up, obviously. Right. So I want more discussion of ideas and have the ideas you disagree with to be overwhelmingly pushed out by the majority, not shut down, let them say whatever they want, but then choose to ignore them. And so that's not a cancel culture. That's the freedom of expression to say what you want. And then at the end of the day, have people examine the idea and say, you know what? I don't think that's correct. And so we disagree with you and we give you no power. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. And so I, I think that's, I think that's where we can go to make this better, but it's not where our leading thought institutions on college campuses are heading right now, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Let's just hope it's not the education of Senator Tim Kaine. Uh, but I, but I do, I do hope you are, uh, I hope you are right. And uh, we can, we can find uh, forge a better path forward. Well, Rodney, I want to thank you for coming on. I want to thank you all for watching, and I want you all to become informed Americans by subscribing to this channel and uh, liking this video if you enjoyed it. Also, head on over to informedamerican.com, uh, and uh, please, uh, if you can get real smart news in your inbox every single day by sharing your email with us, you can get a daily digest of stories uh, written by the Sultan of Sanity. Mr. Rodney Johnson. Uh, Rodney, uh, where can, uh, when people head on over to informedamerican.com or if they, if they do sign up for our, for our email newsletter, what can they expect? What kind of stories can they expect to see in their inbox uh, over the next few days? Well, this is Juneteenth, uh, which is, you know, the celebration of the, emanci the news of the Emancipation Proclamation and enforcement of it, uh, actually making it to Galveston, Texas, the week of, you know, Juneteens, uh, not really sure, which is why it's called Juneteenth, but the June 19th was chosen as the day to celebrate it. Uh, and so I, I, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the weekend. I hope it is uh, very peaceful and very celebratory. That's what it's supposed to be is a celebration. And so we'll see what happens with that. And then we're going to see about the resurgence of, you know, the COVID-19 cases. We're seeing an increased number of cases around the country now. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. And on the financial side, uh, you know, the markets are actually kind of toppy and it'll be interesting to see what people do if they think we have another round of pullback or social distancing or some sort of, you know, business lowering happen uh, given perhaps more COVID-19 cases. Great. For Rodney Johnson, I'm Dave Oakenquist telling you to get informed, America. You've been listening to Get Informed, America, brought to you by the Informed American Radio Network. Please like and subscribe today in order to get new exclusive weekly episodes. Any questions, thoughts, or comments can be sent directly to info at informedamerican.com. And don't forget to visit informedamerican.com to keep up with real, smart news. Until next time, fight fake news and find common ground.